Now let me continue on the four step process in computing the interval estimate. Remember, I hope you remember for large samples because they are very similar. Step one, parameter of interest. What is the topic all about? Average what? Step two, ATC, assumption. This should be the sentence. For small samples, again, when do we say that sample, the sample is small? When it's below 30. But for 30 and above, that's for large samples. So if the sample size is small, we say the assumption this way. The sample size of 20 students, you just change this one, comes from a normally distributed parent population. If it's large, like 35, how do you state that? The sample size of, 50, of 35 students is large enough. Thus, the central limit theorem holds and the sampling distribution is normal. Next, the test statistic. If it's large, the test statistic is Z test. If it's small, the test statistic is T, or that's T test. And if it's for T, you need to declare the standard deviation. Level of confidence. I think you're well aware, you have, we are well acquainted of this one. If it's 99%, our level of significance, our alpha is 0 0.01. For 90%, our alpha is 0 0.10. You need to be very careful between 99% and 90%. Most of the students get an error with this one. You see, 0 0.01 is 1%, while 0 0.1 is 10%. Next, step three, given details. You need to search for the sample size, the degree of freedom, the mean, and the standard deviation. This is just the same with our lesson last Monday. The only difference is you need to add the degrees of freedom. Then the point estimate. Remember that the point estimate is equal to the sample mean or to the population mean. Then for number five, actually my, what's this? I have an, a mnemonics for number for step four. I call it CELOI. That's C E L U I. It stands for C confidence coefficients, E margin of error, L lower limit, U upper limit, and I the interpretation. CELOI. For the margin of error, you need to use this formula. Then when you add the margin of error, you'll get the upper confidence limit or some would call it upper boundary. And if you subtract it, you'll get the lower confidence limits. Then the last one, we need to describe and interpret the results. Let me start with problem number one. An admission officer of an educational institution wants to know the mean age of all entering mathematics majors. He computed a mean age of 18 years and a standard deviation of 1.2 years on a random sample of 25 entering mathematics majors coming from a normally distributed population. With 99% confidence, find the point estimate and the interval estimate of the population mean. Now let's start. Step one, parameter of interest. What is the problem all about? You see, it's in the problem. It's about the mean age. So you just say, it's the mean age of entering mathematics majors. Step two, ATC, assumption. How many people are there? There are 
25 entry math majors. So the sample size is small because it's below 30. How do we state our assumption for a small sample size? We say the sample size of 25 math majors comes from a normally distributed parent population. And since it is a small sample size, then our test statistic is T-test with a standard deviation of 1.2 years. Next, C, confidence level. That's 99%. So our significance level or our alpha is 0 0.01. Next, step three, given. We have our N is 25. So what's our degree of freedom? You subtract one. Our degree of freedom is 24. Next. What else? Um, standard deviation is 1.2 years. And the mean, the mean is 18 years. So our point estimate is equal to the sample mean. So our point estimate is also 18 years old. Next, confidence coefficients. Remember, the degree of freedom is 25, uh, 24, I mean. That's 99%. Let's go to our Z table. 24. Hope you can see it in your screen. Two-tailed test at 1%. So our tabular value is here. Plus and minus 2.797. Um, should it be plus and minus at all times? Um. For this topic, yes. But we'll start doing with a one-tailed test once we'll get to chapter five. So the margin of error, that's 2.797 times 1.2 over square root of 25. I suggest that you really encode this in your calculator. They'll keep on doing plus um, equals equals if you'll keep on doing it, you need to have the answer, the ants, so that you don't you just round off your answer in the last one. So you have 0 0.67. The next, we, we subtract it, that's 17.33. 17 we add it, that's 18.67. Remember our rule? If this is a whole number, this should also be a whole number. But since our margin of error is below one, then we need to express it the two decimal places. So how do we state our results? We say, we can say with 99% confidence that the interval between 17.33 17, and 18.67 years old contains the true mean age of all entering mathematics majors based on the sample of 25 entering math majors. Um, should I always say it that way? Actually, you could paraphrase. You can say, we are 99% confident that the true mean age of all entering mathematics majors ranges from 17.33 to 18.67 years old based on a sample of 25 entering math majors. What's important is you have your confidence level in the results, you have the range, you have the parameter of interest, and you have your sample size. If we check confidence level, the interval estimate, this is the parameter of interest, and this is the sample size. Now, I will no longer um, discuss problem number two because it's very similar to problem number one. I'll give you the opportunity to read by yourself. And also, I'll go to problem number three immediately. 
in problem number three, if you see the raw data is given. So how are we going to do this? Give me a moment, please. I need to open my Excel file. Okay, now let's continue with problem number three. In problem number three, the problem states, consider the numerical example used in point and interval estimation of the population mean at 95% confidence level. The following observed masses in kilograms of a random sample of 20 learners. Now, if you see the raw data is given, so we don't have, the mean and the standard deviation. So what are you going to do? You need to encode this in your Excel, Microsoft Excel. Let me share my Microsoft Excel. I just copied it. So here, I'll type each of them, 40, 45, 46, 48, 48, 50, 55, 55, 56, 58, 58, 59, 60, 60, 62, 62, 64, 64, 65, 66. There are 20 of them. Now let me solve for the mean first, then for the standard deviation. To solve for the mean, the formula is equals average, open parenthesis, you select the whole data, close parenthesis. So our mean is 56.05. Sorry. Next, for standard deviation, the formula is equals STDEV. Open parenthesis, choose the data, close parenthesis, our standard deviation in two decimal places, we have 7.51. So we go back to our lecture notes here. Actually, I have it in four decimal places to make it more accurate, but you can have it in two decimal places, no problem. So with this one, we have now our given data. We first ask, What's the topic all about? It's about the average masses or the mean masses. Again, when we estimate, we must start with the mean or the average in the, pop, in the parameter of interest. Next, assumption. There are 20 learners. So we say a sample of 20 learners comes from a normally distributed parent population. And since it is a small sample size, our test statistic is t-test with a value of s of 7.5147 kilograms. Next, our confidence level, that's 95%. So our alpha or our level of significance is 0 0.05 for our given our N is 20, so our degree of freedom is 19. That's N minus 1. Then our um, sample mean is 56.05, and our standard deviation is 7.5147. Since our point estimate is equal to our sample mean, 
So our point estimate is also 56.05 kilograms. Next, with a degree of freedom of 19, let's go back here. That's 19, two-tailed test at 5%. So our tabular value is 2.0. 93. We compute for the degree of, for the margin of error, that's 3.52. So we add it to our sample mean, we'll get 59.57. We subtract it, we get 52.53. So we state our interpretation. We say we are 95% confident that the interval between 52.53 and 59.57, I missed the unit of measure, kilograms, contains the true mean mass based on the sample of 20 random learners. Now,